God bless you guys. How is everyone doing today? Hope all is well. Today we're going to be talking about the fivefold ministry and we're going to go into depth what each office basically looks like and basically the different characteristics of each office. And my desire in doing this video is that you guys will be able to recognize some of the characteristics in the office and to say that sounds like me and by the end of this video, I'm hoping that you guys can really identify who you are in God so that you can be complete in God. Because when you do not know who you are in God, there's a sense of being incomplete. And we will turn to the world to find the things that's going to fill that void because we don't know our identity. And when you know your identity, things begin to fall into place for you because then you begin to know what the Father really desires you to do. So identifying yourself in God will cause you to feel complete. And that's one of the most important things. As a matter of fact, it is the most important thing that you can do in life is find out who you are in God and begin to walk in your calling. I want you guys to understand that your calling would have been made manifest throughout your life whilst you was growing up. So what does that mean? If you're a teacher, you would have been loving to teach the entire time and you probably wouldn't have recognized that this was your calling all along but the father literally puts a burden in your heart concerning your calling since you were a young child so it would make sense that the very thing that the father has called you to do you love to do your calling is literally something that you'd be passionate about because there's a burden in your heart to already do it so for me i am a teacher i love to teach i get on here and you guys can literally see the passion when i begin to teach a matter of fact i used to sit in class and teach everyone around me all throughout my school years listen i could teach a dog how to bark like i love to teach i began to tell the father i should have been a teacher not knowing that the Father would have made me a teacher for the kingdom of God, but that was my call all along. While I go through the characteristics of the fivefold ministry, I need you guys to go back in your past and dig back up in your past and remember where these different characteristics may have manifested in your life that will cause you to identify in one of these offices. Okay, the next thing that I need to mention every office is significant to the body of christ now realize i called it the body of christ and i call it the body of christ for a reason it's called the body of christ for a reason i want you to picture your body your body has different members correct your hand your feet your nose your mouth it has different members and each member of your body is significant to help your body to function the way your body is supposed to function otherwise your body will be out of order can you imagine having hands for feet or feet for hands like that would first of all that would look crazy right but other than it looking crazy I need you guys to recognize that it will be out of order and it wouldn't work well in the body of Christ the members us who make up the different offices in the body of Christ those different members they are significant in the body of Christ for also maintaining order for the kingdom of God God is very strategic as to where he has placed people so that we as the body of Christ can reach everyone around the world because there are different offices that are assigned to different people. Now I need you guys to understand there are five offices in the fivefold ministry. There's the apostle, there's a the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, and the pastor. And contrary to a lot of popular religious beliefs, there are such things still as prophets and apostles. And I know that a lot of people teach that they don't exist anymore and that's not true and i hope by the end of this video you guys will be able to drop that false doctrine because it's doctrines of devils who has bewitched you guys i need you guys to understand something that that doctrine is literally the leaven of the pharisees remember jesus had warned his disciples to stay away from the leaven of the pharisees to be careful of the leaven of the Pharisees because they teach you false doctrine and it's like a plague. It spreads. It keeps people in bondage to realizing their potential in God and who they really are because the Father has called us to take authority and dominion in the earth. It's literally written in the book of Genesis. And in doing so, his name would be exalted. It's not for our exaltation, but it is for us to be able to point back the people to God. All the fivefold ministries points the people back to God. The fivefold ministry is to literally edify the body of Christ. If you're religious and you have something negative to say, please don't drop it in the comments below. Just exit from the video because I don't want you being a stumbling block to the babes in Christ. 
Let them learn and let them come in and be able to receive and let them be able to enter in. Stop holding back the people with your false doctrine. Please, this is not a place to comment. I'm telling you guys that your comment will get deleted. I'm not tolerating it anymore. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the apostles. So the apostles' job is to midwife those who they take under their wings. The apostles' calling is to take disciples under their wings, equip them, and then deploy them. So they will take these people, train them in the kingdom of God, and equip them and give them an impartation. The apostles have a gift of being able to interpret the deeper things in Christ. They walk in the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So if you have seen throughout your life that you walk in wisdom, that even causes you sometimes to be shocked, that will make you think like, how did I know this thing? I need you guys to understand that that is the Holy Spirit using you in the gift of wisdom. You'd always know things without looking it up. This may sound weird, but if this is you, you'll be able to know what I'm talking about. You're just a knower. You know things without having to look it up. You don't understand why, but you just know. And that's the Holy Spirit. That shows you that you may have an apostolic gift because the Lord causes those with an apostolic gift to be able to understand the things of the deep, spiritual things. So what does that mean? That if you really get before the Lord and you meditate in the Lord's presence and you ask the Lord to reveal things unto you, you're going to be able to interpret and to understand the things of the deep, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And if you also feel a burden to teach people the things that you know so that they can go ahead and teach it as well and you want to instill your wisdom into others, you may have an apostolic calling in your life because apostolic people desire their wisdom to be imparted into others so they can literally pass this mantle, the baton, to those who have they have disciple to tell them to go forth and to do ministry. The impartation is the equipping. You are training and imparting your wisdom and your knowledge given to you by the Holy Spirit to be able to cause these people to understand how to function in ministry because you are a midwife. You will take what God has given onto you and desire it to be in others so that they can go and do what you do. That's exactly how Jesus moved. Do you remember when he had called his disciples and he said, follow me? He had them around during all the miracles that he was performing. He had them around when he was healing the sick and raising the dead and all these things that he was doing. His disciples were around. He had them up underneath him to teach them and give them an impartation to increase their faith, to cause them to understand that the things that he is doing, they can do too. That's why the Bible says greater works you will do. And a lot of people don't like that doctrine because you lack faith. And an apostle does that. They will give an impartation of what is in them and what they have learned through the leading of the Holy Spirit. They feel a burden to midwife others and to birth that thing out of other people. So if you have a burden in your heart to give people the same wisdom that you have, you may have an apostolic gift on you. Because it is a midwife burden, you will desire that thing that's in them that the Father has ordained for them to do. You will want to see it in its fullness. You will want them to be able to birth that thing in its fullness. So when I say birth, I'm talking about spiritual. There is literally something that the Father has ordained them to do and it's a burden in the pit of their stomach. There is something that the Father has called them to do. But they are unaware of their identity. And you as the apostle are able to identify in them what their calling is, what their gift is, and you desire to cause them to birth out this thing that the Father has put inside of them. You desire their calling to be made manifest. You will literally midwife them and teach them how to deliver and bring this thing to full term so that they can establish their ministry. You are able to look at them and recognize their calling and who they are 
in God and even though they may not know who they are and you recognize who they are, your desire and your heart is feeling burdened to now help them to develop this thing and bring it to full terms so that they can birth out what the Lord has called them to do. That is who an apostle really is. The Father, if you're an apostle, he will give you these disciples to train and to equip. So now they are equipped. So what do you do next? You deploy them. They are ready to go and begin their own ministry. Remember Jesus. Jesus, he took his disciples under his wings and he trained them. And these are people who did not know anything about anything that Jesus was teaching before Jesus taught it. While they were going along with Jesus, they were receiving the impartation because they were in a season of being trained and equipped. So Jesus carried them all around when he was doing deliverance on people and when he was performing miracles so that he could not only build their faith but cause them to understand that they can do the same works. He literally trained them to understand that they can do the same works. He told them greater works you will do if they have faith. And this is contrary to what the religious people teach because they don't have faith. Faith. They lack faith. So you'll see that a lot of people, they, they talk about what is called the faith doctrine and they try to make faith seem like it isn't what it is. But with God, all things are possible. I don't understand how the body of Christ confuses that. The Bible throughout the Gospels tries to increase our faith, but yet there is still a lack of faith in the body of Christ. Before Jesus had went to his father, he told the people, I'm going to my father, so greater works you will do. So I need you guys to understand that the impartation was there now, and Jesus, after he ascended, they were deployed now to go and do the work of the ministry because Jesus' work was finished. He brought that thing to full term, and they were able now to walk in the impartation. He equipped them to be able to walk in the manifestation of the kingdom here on earth so that is what an apostle does they take under their wings they equip the apostle has the gift of wisdom because they have to do a lot of training they midwife and then they deploy they take under their wings they equip and they deploy jesus christ said that he came speaking in mysteries mysteries are the things of that which is spirit and that is one of the main things that allows you to know that you are apostolic it is the things of the deep it's mysteries of the kingdom of heaven even jesus when he was speaking in parables it was deep things that he had to break down so that which is physical so that we can be able to understand it because the spiritual things would have confounded even his disciples who were following him up close because they weren't used to the spiritual things. But you need a lot of training and you need the Father to humble you and you need to go through a process of being able to understand how an apostle really moves and what the Father desires of you. But that comes with maturity. That most of all comes by way of the Holy Spirit. So what is a prophet and how can you identify if you're a prophet? The prophet is literally God's mouthpiece. They feel a burden and an unction to speak what the Lord is feeling. They are able to hear from God. They are able to feel the Father's heart. And we speak the Father's heart. So what is the Father's heart concerning a matter? The prophet is able to feel that thing that the Father is feeling. What's burdening the Father's heart? And the Father will cause you to have utterance. And you will just begin to speak what the Father is saying. So if you begin to have like this overwhelming feeling in the pit of your stomach... Like, I know that I have to speak up on this thing. This thing is like a weight on my shoulders. I have to speak it. That is the Holy Spirit telling you to speak up concerning a matter. And that is how you really know that you're a prophet. I need you guys to understand something here because a lot of people confuse this. There are different types of prophets. The mantle is the prophet. You're a prophet, right? But then there are different types of prophet. And each prophet is a sign to different things for instance me the lord has caused me to bring correction to the body of christ so my calling is to the religious i'm literally sent to correct those who are religious and bring them into alignment with the kingdom of god and the lord has caused me to understand the religious on a deeper level than probably a lot of other people do the father has ministered to my heart concerning the 
religious spirit and has caused me to understand it on such a deep level that I'm able to discern a religious spirit when it just walks into a room and it opens up its mouth and begins to speak. I can discern you from a mile away. I was sent to deal with the religious. There are prophets who are sent to the government. There are prophets who are sent to the media. You have to know what mountain you're sent to. Who did the Father call you to go to? Not every prophet is assigned to the same people. And that is where we all mess up because everybody is on Facebook Live trying to prophesy to everybody, trying to do an individual prophecy when that's not even how prophets work. Tell me where in the Bible do you see that? Where in the Bible do you see prophets prophesying to individual people, standing on the side of the road, calling people by name and prophesying to each individual person? Usually it's a general prophecy. And if the Lord is burdening the prophet's heart to give you a word, if the Holy Spirit comes upon you to give an individual a word, it's not for fame. It's a prideful thing to get on social media and a platform. And literally you're trying to make your name great when you get on a platform and you begin to have a word for everybody it's out of order it's not how God moves so a prophet will feel the unction to speak because of a burden that's in your heart you stand up for righteousness you hate injustice you hate unfairness and you love order you love to make sure things are in order the prophet is one who restores order so you love when things are orderly and when things are not in order it kind of irks your spirit you are one who likes to see all things new <laughs> and that is how you would really know that you are a prophet there are many characteristics of a prophet um, if you have experienced rejection growing up to the aspect of feeling like an outcast, you don't really have a lot of friends, you are awkward, you're weird to be around, you speak different and that's why people don't really get along with you, you try to fit in but you just can't fit in, that is a prophet. A lot of the times you will experience that as a prophet. So next, the evangelist. The evangelist is those who have a heart for the lost. They desire the lost to know God and they desire the lost to be saved. So they speak with compassion, with love, with understanding, and their message is always the cross. You'll always hear that their message revolves around love. Their message revolves around the love of God. They are those who are the lamb. The evangelist gives the people the lamb. They're very loving and they know how to love upon the loss and to cause the loss to say, I need to know about this God that you're talking about. Now that the evangelist has won the loss, what do they do with the loss? They feel a burden to bring the loss to somebody who can equip and train the loss to bring them from a stage of being babes in Christ to a mature level in Christ. So now they bring them into the house of God, into the church. And now the pastor's job, what does a pastor do? A pastor will feel burdened to train this person to raise them. Because remember, when they're a babe in Christ and they have now been taken out of the world, they don't understand the things of God. The pastor is burdened to mature them and will also feel a burden to comfort them, to love up on them, and to heal their wounds that they have came out of. So the heart wounds and the emotional wounds, the church is a hospital for that. And the pastor's burden is to heal those places of those people, to bring them into a place of maturity. So that is the pastor's heart. They want the babes in Christ to come to maturity. They desire growth and it comes from healing. They would take you through deliverance. The church is literally a hospital and the pastor is the shepherd and the people, the congregation are the sheep. So he, a pastor, a shepherd always has that thing. I forgot what it's called, but they hook the sheep to bring them back in. And that is literally what the pastor does. Every time they see the sheep going astray, they will take that thing and pull it back in because they don't want to see the sheep hurt. They have such patience with those who who God has entrusted them to be in their in their congregation. They have a deep love for the people that are in their church. They have a lot of patience for those people. 
They are the ones who have the patience to answer the phone in the middle of the night and talk and talk and talk and they won't feel bothered by that. That is the heart of a pastor. If you love up on people and you want to see them restored and you want to bring healing to them in areas like the heart and to watch them get delivered and free from the things of the past that has hurt them and cause emotional trauma and all of that. The church is literally made for that. The church is a hospital. So the pastor's burden is to shepherd the those sheep and to again raise them in the kingdom of God to cause them from going from drinking milk to eating meat. Now what does that mean? The babes in Christ who now come from the world they don't understand the spiritual things as yet. They are not able to understand the deep things of God yet. So in the congregation of people in the church, you will have different levels of people. And the pastor is gifted to be able to talk to all of them and explain things for each level to be able to understand. That's the pastor's gift. I don't know how they do it, but they're good at doing that. They'll be able to bring a message that can touch each individual person's life. So when I say moving from milk now to meat, when these people come from off the streets and they are introduced to the kingdom of God, we got to remember that they don't know anything about the kingdom yet. So they need the simplicity of the gospel to be given on to them in the most simple way so that they can be able to take it in because they need milk. They need to be fed milk because they can't understand that which is deeper quite yet. Those who are a little bit more mature can move on to eating a little bit more substance. And then as you mature and you're more spirit filled and you're able to understand the things of the spirit more, then the pastor will be able to give you the meatier things, the meaty things so that you can, you guys can chew and digest it. And pastors, this is how you can know where your congregation is. What message is the Lord burdening your heart to, to teach? Is it the thing that's more simplified? Then you'll know that's where your congregation is. You have to be able to discern what the Father has given you to teach. And then you'll know where spiritually your congregation is. Anyway, and then we have the teachers. These are the people who just love to teach for absolutely no reason. That's me. And I'm talking about myself there. These are the people that have a passion to teach. And they can teach literally anything. Um, and they know how to simplify that which is given on to them to teach. You'll know if you're a teacher because it would have been manifest throughout your life. You just love to teach, you can't help it. If you're not a literal teacher teaching in schools, you may be mistaken as one who is prideful because you love to go into depth and explain things because you have a passion when it comes to teaching the things that you're teaching. So sometimes it may seem like you're prideful to others when you're talking about something. But really, it's a passion, and that's how you know that you're a teacher. When people are talking and you desire to say, I have advice for that. I, let me teach you concerning that what I've learned. Or let me give you a word of encouragement concerning that. Because it comes from a place of wisdom. Teachers also have wisdom. And they love to break down things to a simplicity as well. So if you have seen that made manifest in your life, know that you may be called to be a teacher. So that, my friend, is the fivefold ministry. I'm going to be posting another video on here that I already made concerning the fivefold ministry because my desire is that you guys are able to understand the fivefold ministry in its fullness. A lot of the things that I did teach on here, I did repeat in that video. So don't be alarmed if you watch and you're like, you already said this. It's just that my desire is to cause you guys to understand who you are in God so that you can walk in your identity and your calling and know who the Father has called you to be in confidence and let me just straighten out one thing before I go it's God who ordains you and gives you your call don't wait on the church to do so if the father has talked to you concerning what your calling is get up and do it and don't wait for the church to tell you because sometimes they can't identify who you are don't go through the whole thing where you want to be ordained in an office so you got to pay to do it and you got to take classes and then you got to wait for your pastor to ordain you and all of that no if the father is calling you move in your office because you've been ordained to move in it it should come naturally if you're submitted to the spirit of god and you are humble before him anyway god bless you guys i love you guys and i hope this encouraged you guys to walk in your calling to identify who you are in god and walk in your calling god bless you guys i love you and take care